We're going to look at a concept known now as the law of definite proportions and reactions of mass. Here's a good example of that. If I have a reaction that involves two substances, X and Y, and if they're going to combine, they're going to produce a product for this reaction that's going to have a very specific mass. Now, you'll remember that Antoine Lavoisier's comment was that nothing is created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. So if I have four grams of reactants, I have four grams of products. That just has to be the case. Well, if I look at it from a perspective of X and Y reacting and combining to make a product, we have to take into account all the mass of each one of them. Now, let's take a, a different kind of approach to this. Let's say I have five grams of X and I have uh, 14 grams of Y. These two substances combine together to form a compound X, Y. Okay? Now, if that be the case, X, Y must have the mass of 19 grams because 5 grams plus 9, or 14 grams is equal to 19 grams. Okay? So these would be the reactants and those would be the products. This would look like X plus Y yields X, Y. Alright, now in that instance, then I'm going to see the mass of my products equals the mass of my reactants. These are product are reactants. And those are products. Now that's an example then, when I get done, I've got a small compound of a fixed ratio by mass. The ratio by mass would always be 5 grams to 14 grams. Okay, so a good application of that would be then if I had 10 grams of X and I had 28 grams of Y, they would still react at a 1 to 1 ratio producing the compound XY known as the law of definite proportions. Compound X, Y would always have the same ratio by mass of its two substances. It goes clear down to the atomic level, it comes uh, clear up to the gram mass uh, level, so we're able to see that be the case every time. Now, let's stretch that a little bit and, uh, and look at another compound involving X and Y. If I had a compound that was known to be X2Y, could I predict the amount of um, X that would be required for that compound? Could I predict the amount of Y that would be required for that compound? If my initial reaction was this. Well, if I look at that, if I'm going to make X2Y and XY was made of 5 grams of that and 14 grams of that, then we're going to uh, extend a little bit into that, we're going to say, well, the initial one had 5, so that one's going to have to have 10 grams of X and 14 grams of Y. Now, if I look at these, I still have the 14 grams in both cases, but this one is twice the amount of that. So these two are an example then. of the law of multiple proportions. And the law of multiple proportions says that if I hold the mass of one of them uh, constant between two compounds, that the other two elements in the compound can be represented as a small whole number ratio. And I think you can see from my example that the whole number ratio of x, when I hold the mass of y constant, would be 1 to 2.